And welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti, and my guest this evening is Steve Terreri from the Paul Dosti Foundation. Steve! Pete, how are you? Hey, buddy, how are you? Good doing to see very, you. I'm very well. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thanks for coming down. Long time no see. Yeah, I know, I feel it's, been... it's probably my fault. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. That's okay. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been involved with the foundation. Uh, well, that's a, that's a, uh, you've got a couple hours, I can tell you. I do. Uh, no, I'm just, um, <laughs> well, um, my name is Steve Terreri, and I'm a family member of Paul Dosti. Um, he's my brother-in-law. Okay. Um, and I've, you know, been, I've known, I knew him for decades, right. you know, since I've, I've been married for 43 years and um, known Paul ever since I first started dating my wife. Okay. And he started dating uh, my wife's sister. So ah. we go back a long, long way. Okay. A lot of family functions, very close family. Um, uh, so we have a lot, lot, in, co lot in common that way. Okay. What type of guy was, what, what was Paul like? What type of guy was he like? He, if you looked at him, he uh, could have been a GQ model. <laughs> um, he should have been a tight end for the New England Patriots. Okay. Um, uh, he ends up, ended up being an auto mechanic, a, um, a transmission specialist. If mm -hmm. you talk to the... Uh, Garages around the shoreline, they'd say he was a master mechanic when it came to uh, transmissions. Okay. Um, so, and he was um, a very uh, ca caring, kind, fair guy. Yeah. Uh, and I, I started working with him and his business about 10 years ago to help him with the business side of things. Okay. And I, I used to tell him all the time, you got to stop giving this away for nothing. Yeah, right. <laughs> because, you know, you got to earn a living. So he, he, uh, he was, that's why when we, when he passed and we started thinking about him and how we were going to keep his memory alive, mm -hmm. we thought, we thought about the word kindness. And that's where this uh, care came from. Kindness always rewards everyone. It was something that kind of reminded us of Paul. Okay. He's a really nice, really kind guy. Now tell us about the foundation. The foundation, we've been in existence for just about three years. Okay. Uh, Paul, Paul, will be, Paul passed away uh, May 25th, 2021, so we're coming up on three years. And like I said a second ago, we were trying to think of something to kind of keep his memory alive because before he passed away, we did a fundraiser at Thimble Island Brewery, and it was jam-packed with people including Senator Blumenthal and then when he passed there was thousand you know well over a thousand we think maybe 1200 people came to his wake wow so we we said you know how do we keep this this uh, alive so we came up with the idea of uh, of a foundation with uh, myself and his older sister Linda his wife Jeannie and his brother Paul four of us formed mm -hmm. the board and what we wanted to do is uh, raise money and make uh, uh, financial uh, contributions to families that are struggling um, because of their disease. They're financially struggling because of their disease. And we started out by giving like smaller grants and then we decided that we wanted to, to make a difference in their life. Okay. And so we came up with a, you know, a, a, the idea of giving a $5,000 grant every month. We give one $5,000, at least one $5,000 grant every month to a family that's really, you know, in need. Wow. Yeah. And, and we focus on we focus on brain tumor because of Paul. Right. And we also fo focus on another disease called HCM, which is a disease his daughter, his, one of his twin daughters has. Um, and we've helped a lot of GBM and HCM uh, families since, since inception. What is HCM? Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a, uh, a, a congenital heart defect. Uh, and his daughter Allie's had, I think, I want to say eight open heart surgeries since she was a baby. Oh, wow. And she's um, right now being evaluated for a heart transplant. So some of the folks that we've supported uh, through our foundation uh, ultimately got uh, heart transplants. Um, a couple, actually one woman that's about Allie's age is actually coming to CareFest this year. Really? Yeah. Now, is there a donor list that people can go on to help Allie? Uh, we haven't really done that. Okay. Uh, you know, she's, she's in good shape. She's got oh, good, is she? Yeah, she's got good finance, good insurance and all that. Oh, so okay. We, you know, so we, we don't need to go that route. No, we don't need to. We, we need to you know, she'd, rather you, she'd rather you give money to the CARE Foundation that, yeah, we, can, right? we, that we can spend 
in the way I describe. Right. Speaking of the CARE Foundation, I understand you guys have an event coming up. Right. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Um, so, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll mm. give you this uh, yeah. little t-shirt that oh, we thank you. have available for our, our CARE Foundation CARE Fest. All right. Um, but we, we, uh, we, our primary funding uh, event is called CARE Fest. Okay. And it's, um, it happens every year in June. This will be our third annual uh, event. Hold that up for the camera. There you go. Let's see if we can get a little picture of that. A shot of that. Let's see. That, uh, you've, you've, I've already talked about the acronym. Yep. The little heart with the, um, uh, the, with the smile on it was the way Paul would um, leave notes to his girls and he'd make that heart. So Really? Yeah, that's his, that's his thing that we're trying to trademark, by the way. Cool. <laughs> nice. There you go. So anyway, CareFest is June 15th. All right. Uh, we, this is our third annual event. Um, this year we'll have um, uh, five bands, um, um, Thimble Island Beer, uh, uh, Margarita Tent, um, uh, Silent Auction, um, and you know, the, the, and most of the bands are pay, playing for free. Oh, really? And, and it's uh, uh, several local bands, and then our headliner is a, a, a Spring, Bruce Springsteen tribute band. I saw that on your website. Yeah, Alex Shilo and and his tribute to Bruce Springsteen. He's excellent. Is he? I was yeah. going to say they any, they're pretty good. Really good. Right. Yeah. So we're we're promoting it pretty heavy right now. Now, as far as the event goes in June. When, where, and what time? It's uh, June fifteenth. Uh, uh, gates open at three. Okay. We'll be playing till ten o'clock um, at the Guilford Fairgrounds in Guilford, Connecticut. Okay. And is there an admission fee to get in? Uh, yes, uh, twenty-five dollars. Uh, uh, twenty-five dollars for the tickets to get in. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable for what you're going to get, and it's going to be a good, really good time. Now, how did you guys come up with the idea of the event? Uh, I think the, I think the idea initially was, you know, when Paul was sick, he would he'd always say to us, uh, "Don't worry, Steve, I got this. You know, I'm going to get over this." Had a big smile on his face up until the you know he day, day passed, and he kept saying to us, "You know, when this is all done, we're going to have a big party." So initially, I think we kind of said, "You know what? Let's throw a party for Paul." And that's where I think the Care Fest came from. So now every year we throw a big party, and yeah. you know we get all kinds of folks helping us, and and we always look up to the sky and say, Paul, your only job is to give us a nice sunny day, so we you know have a have a rain exactly. Day. We don't want to do this in the rain. No, no. <laughs> but you know we will do it if it rains. So it's rain or shine. Exactly. But it's probably going to be a lot more fun in the sun. It would be rather, lot, rather than the rain. It would be a lot more fun in the sun. <laughs> Now, what other events or fundraisers do you guys do, or is, it, or is this the biggie for the year? Well, we've done some uh, direct mail uh, 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 funding uh, solicitation. We've done, we're doing some work on social media, but we also uh -huh. have a golf tournament that's coming up in, um, I believe it's in um, August 23rd at the um, Portland Golf Course in, oh, okay. in Portland, Connecticut. All so right. we did that last year, and that was, that was successful. And we, we raise some funds that way. And we, and we do, um, like, you know, May is Brain Cancer Awareness Month, and we'll, we'll be doing a, you know, an email campaign and a, a, oh. a um, social media campaign to kind of put the focus on potentially supporting our foundation and making donations for the month, month of uh, May. And Paul's, uh, as I mentioned, Paul passed away in, uh, in May as well. So we're going to uh, get something cooking on on social media. Now, where can people find you on social media? We we can. Uh, I think I think they have the um, the links. Do I we think. have the link. I think we do. Have, I think they have them. They can. Yeah, we got the Facebook link and the Instagram link. I believe. Yeah. The and then our, our website is uh, pdcare p d k a r e uh, dot org. That's our okay. website. You can get to everything for, through our website. And what types of information can people find on the website? You can you can um, uh, see our mission. You hear a little bit more about Paul, his story. You can um, see um, the uh, current recipients of our funding and past recipients of our funding. Our um, uh, Paul's sister uh, Linda does a wonderful job, kind of doing a write up for each one of the 
uh, families. Uh, their pictures are there. Um, there's uh, a, a tab on our events, so you'll get to look at uh, anything you want to know about CareFest and the golf tournament is on there. And then we have a section with pictures from past events. And, and there's some um, uh, press uh, information too. I think my last interview with you is on there. I believe it. I actually yeah. believe it is because yeah. I, look, I yeah. looked at the website the other day and yeah. I'm like, yeah. Hey, there we are again. There you go. <laughs> I, I watched it the other night to get ready. I was. Oh, did you? <laughs> see, see if you're going to throw me any curveballs. No, no, no. I don't. I don't throw curveballs <laughs> no, or meatballs. We're good. I'm just kidding. We're good. I'm just kidding. Now, as far as the mission of the organization, what is the mission? Well, I, I like to. I paraphrase that our mission is to to help uh, take the financial pressure off of, of families that are suffering financially due to due to their disease. And we also, um, and I mentioned the two diseases we kind of focus on, but we have veered off that um, mission a couple of times when, when there was some, something that happened in like Guilford, there was a family whose uh, father um, suffered a, um, um, a fracture of uh, the neck and is, uh, he's a, 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 a quadriplegic, so we, okay. we donated some funds to help him. So we've gone off, that, off the mission, but that's kind of what we're, we're are, we're out there to help folks get through some financial difficulties as a result of their disease. The other thing we do is, um, Paul is notorious for uh, finding this uh, backyard mechanic, a uh, kid that was fixing lawnmowers and their father's car and you know, souping up a go-kart. He would, he would pull that kid into uh, the automotive tech world. Right. And so what we do uh, once a year, we try to find a kid that would satisfy that Paul Dosty backyard mechanic um, criteria, and we give them a grant uh, either to go to a Botech school, right. or if they didn't want to do that, um, they needed money to buy a toolbox and some tools. Right. Uh, we've helped to, we've helped several folks um, in, since we've since inception. I think this year we're going to give out two scholarships. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, to two uh, backyard mechanics. And if people want information on the Backyard Mechanic program, they obviously can go on the website. It's all there. Yeah. It's, all, it's all there? Yeah, it's all there. Now, what are some of the cr criterias for the Backyard Mechanic Scholarship? Uh, that's a great question. I think, I think they're, very, they're a rare breed. Okay. Uh, so it's, sometimes it's hard to find them. And right. so what we uh, have, have done is uh, contacted some of the schools that have a, um, you know, a, a Votech kind of... Um, bent and ask them to, to you know let us know if you know if you know anyone that fits that criteria i think you know and it's, it's sometimes it's a easy, it's crazy like word of mouth kind of things right the two that we have now um uh what we're, we're a word of mouth kind of thing that somebody in the neighborhood said hey this kid this kid's a, a, a mechanic and he does work in the in the driveway right and we kind of connected with him and then we said okay he's he, he fits the Mole, he wants to be a mechanic. I think that's the criteria. If if it if if we can interview the person and we kind of feel like they definitely want to become a mechanic, they mm -hmm. this is what they've chosen to do, um, then we we might uh, you know give them a grant. Would you mind sticking around for another segment? Sure. All right, we'll be right back. Connecticut has lost 35 million in gross earnings taxes because cable TV providers are losing customers. Yet cable companies continue to enjoy a tax exemption on their equipment that their telecom competitors don't get. At the same time, the telecoms don't pay gross earnings tax. This, this doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. It's time to level the playing field. Make everyone pay their fair share. Please support sustainable funding for digital equity, community access, and the CTN network. Come on in. Welcome to Shore Things. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Hello and welcome to Arts and Entertainment. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with Steve Terreri from the Paul Dusty Care Found Foundation. Sir, welcome back. Thank you for having you me. You got it. Thank you. So, Steve, we were talking a little bit during the break about the different types of 
cancers and diseases that the foundation helps. Maybe we can open up this segment talking a little bit in more detail about those. Yeah, I think that the uh, pr I think when we started out, um, I think because Paul passed from glioblastoma, we focused our, our efforts in the glio on glioblastoma, okay. GBM, and um, you know it's a deadly disease. Um, I think the uh, I, I'm, I'm not a physician, so That's I think okay. the median survival is like 14. I think it's like 14 months from diagnosis. Oh wow! Um, and Paul um, um, lived 19 months, uh, okay. so he lived a little longer than uh, normal. And you know, uh, you try everything you can think of to try mm -hmm. to help them. Right? I took him to the, we took him to the Dana Farber. Uh, we took him to Ma uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and then we took him down to Duke uh, and saw and saw Dr. Friedman, okay. who's a, a, a world-renowned um, a brain tumor specialist. And uh, we, we got him in a clinical trial. Right. Um, so he was in a clinical trial for a while, uh, then fell out of the trial, and then um, um, you know, kind of went downhill pretty quickly. Oh, boy. And that's, that happens you know, to a lot of the folks. And I think the thing uh, I like to talk about is that um, when, I, when people ask me what we do, I, I, I don't often say we support the patient. I always say, I try to say, we support the family right. because the patient, you know, and, and unfortunately with GBM um, doesn't uh, usually survive, but the family does. Right. And sometimes the family's made tremendous sacrifices to uh, to try to um, get care for that for their uh, loved one. Mm -hmm. You know, they might have been not been able to go to work, um, and you know, not not be able to make a mortgage payment or. Or, uh, or other financial commitments that they have. So we kind of think about the family right. as well as the patient. So, uh, so that's GBM. Um, and that's really, I mean, in terms of cancers, um, we've, I think the only other one that we supported was a uh, patient uh, with colorectal cancer that had a GBM connection. Um, one of the bands that played uh, in, in CareFest last year, um, uh, one of the guitarists, lost his wife uh, to GBM. And then right after CareFest, he was diagnosed with colorectal cancer and, oh and couldn't boy. work for months. And so we, we made a grant to him to help him get through um, his, um, his situation. And then I, the, I guess another story I can tell is um, we made a connection with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Sure. And we've, had, we've supported a couple patients that came to us through, through Dana-Farber. And I, in my day job, I work in the uh, bone marrow transplant world. And uh, one of the bone marrow transplanters um, contacted me and said, hey, I've got this family. Uh, the mother's got ovarian cancer. Uh, and three, of, his, uh, three of, the, of her daughters are sick with a neurological um, uh, cancer. And one passed after a bone marrow transplant. Oh, and, and the two others are, are just hanging on. And they had no, really no money, and they're about to be homeless. Oh no! So that was that was a, a, a grant that was easy, an easy board decision to make. Yeah, exactly. So we we supported that family and got them off the street. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to think um, of some other story. I could tell you some other stories. Sure, go for it. Um, I think I think I mentioned to you that you know, in addition to GBM, we focus on HCM, and uh, we've, we supported a, a, a young lady who um, needed a heart transplant, was in financial uh, distress, mm -hmm. and she received her transplant, and uh, she's roughly the same age as one of Paul's daughters. Uh, and then we, we, we had the same situation with a young, uh, a young child recently that just actually, as of I think this past week, just came home after um, their heart, heart transplant. So we've had a couple heart transplant patients that we've, that we've helped a bit um, were in financial distress. Wow. You guys seem like a very busy and worthwhile organization. It is, it's, it is, it's, it's, uh, it, it eases the pain of losing a, a loved yeah. one, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, it, we, we're definitely given something back, uh, you know, um, that, you know, personally, it's, it's, um, it's been amazing to me uh, to watch you know, the difficulties folks have, but also on the other side of the coin, uh, raising funds for the, 
foundation. Um, I'm very involved with the uh, corporate sponsorships and okay. so on and so forth. And the generosity of people is is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 mind boggling how generous people are. So we've we've got a lot of a lot of sponsorship. Now, how are you guys funded? Are you guys funded by donation or? By obviously by corporate sponsor. We yeah well, we sell corporate sponsorships for Carefest. Okay. And um, and um, so that's a big chunk of it. Okay. And then we've got the gate, you know the the for, gate, the know, gate fees fees and so on. That's uh, that's and then we've applied for some several grants uh, through the Guilford Foundation and we sure. we did receive an ARPA ARPA grant this past year um, for um, you know working with you're working on. Um, you know, our, our, how we were affected by the COVID situation. And now how were you guys affected by the COVID situation? Well, it really, it really delayed our ability to really get up and running by about a year. Really? Yeah, because we were, we were going to do a, uh, we were gonna do CareFest um, in 2020. Okay. And we couldn't because of, because of, the, um, because of the pandemic. Right. So we, we applied for an ARPA alone and they, or ARPA grant, and they gave, they gave us the grant. Really yeah. nice, and all the ARPA funds went to fund, obviously fund the foundation for what you guys do. Yeah, we we asked for the funding to help us, you know, even when it came to uh, getting better with um, social media and direct mail and that kind of thing. So we used the funds for that, right, to improve our our the strength of our foundation. Now, as far as the foundation goes if people want to donate they can obviously go donate online or you can go to the website uh, uh, pdcare.org um, okay. and there's a mechanism there for you to um, to make a donation okay and obviously no donation is too small not we'll, we'll take any any donation <laughs> and they they all add up and you know um, we like I said I'm we're, we're amazed at how generous folks are and uh, and all of the f donations are obviously kept locally to you guys in Guilford, with the with the foundation. Say that again. I'm sorry. All of the money is kept local. Y yeah. Well, yeah. We've and yeah. I guess in a way. Okay. I, I mean, we've we've um, we've made grants to uh, folks all over the country. Not oh, okay. Just, not uh, not just most of them. I say we're, we're in the Connecticut area. Okay. But we've we've made one um, um, in uh, recently in Pittsburgh. We've made them down in some of the southern states. We've, you know, when we, we get, we get um, I guess, noticed on, online and right. a lot of word of mouth and we've gotten, we've gotten requests from all over the country. Boston, I mentioned we did yep. a couple up in the Boston market as well. Yeah. Now, if what, let, let's circle back and talk about CareFest again. Mm -hmm. When, where, what time, Ticket prices? June 15th okay. at the Guilford Fairgrounds. All right. A gate op gates open at three, bands start playing at four. Um, we'll have bands until playing till 10. Okay. Um, we'll have food trucks there. We'll have um, silent auction there. We'll have Thimble Island um, Brewery, a beer. Oh, sure. And then we'll have a Cancion a tequila margaritas there. Um, cornhole, you know, a really good time. It's a family event. Yeah. Uh, kids will be dancing and it's it's a lot of fun. Now, do we have confirmed bands? We do. Okay. So we have a, a, a band called B-Sides, which is a, a, a more of a pop band. Okay. Pop and, and, and uh, classic rock. All right. Uh, we have a band called The Ticket, which is a Pepe Capazone and, um, and, um, and company. Okay. Uh, they're uh, more like... Um, Eagles kind of rock, you know. Gotcha. Very good band. We got a band called Shot Down, which is country and rock, uh, and we have a band called the um, uh, used to be called the Crushed Stones. Now they're called the Unavailables. Okay. And they are be they'll be uh, they just went into the studio and recorded a an album, and they're going to release their album at um, at Carefest. Oh, cool. And then the the headliner is uh, Alex Shilo. Uh, and the uh, tribute to Bruce Springsteen, which should be really good. Have you seen them play? I've seen, I've heard them play. I okay. haven't seen them play. They played at the Kate not too long ago, a couple oh, weeks ago. Good thing. Yeah. yeah. 
I actually think I saw, might have seen that in the yeah, paper. Yeah, I missed it. I wished I'd, I wished I'd, I thought they were playing later in the month, and it was on April 20th. But oh, okay. I got video clips from his manager. He, they played great. They yeah. sound really good. They, they, they seem pretty, pretty good. Yeah, he sounds just like them. It's great. It's, it's amazing. And last, I, I believe, recently, Springsteen was here in Connecticut. He did a show up at the casino. Oh, I didn't know that. I believe, I'm pretty sure it was a couple of weeks ago. I actually saw it, saw it, I saw it on the news that he was, that he was there and. Yeah, we're not ready for that yet, but. No, uh, no, 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 Someday maybe, I'll, I'll put that on my someday maybe it's list. On the someday maybe bucket list? Yeah, I, I mean, I tried to get Bonnie Raitt because she's playing at Bridgeport on the 14th and, and in Boston that evening of the 15th, I said, well, you just drive by exit 58, get off. Right. Exactly. Play, yeah, play, you're play driving a, by, so you might as well play a song and get back on 95. <laughs> and, swing by, say hi, and yeah, she was. They were nice enough to call me and talk to me live, and said, "No, we're not. We can't do that. We and can't do that." Talked to John Mellencamp's uh, manager, and he said, "No, we can't do that." Really? Um, so, so we'll get there someday. Yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a sizable expense for a, you know, small oh. uh, startup it's, foundation yeah, to, totally not to, cheap. to do that. So we'll we'll get there someday. Steve Torini from the Paul Dusty Foundation. We're out of time. We'll see you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Steve, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next time.